Uh, one of the producers sent it to me, and um, I am not entirely sure why they thought of me, just because it's very different in tone from my other work, but I, w I would like to think that, at least when I read it, I thought, oh, this is really a performance movie, you know, and, uh, and I, I hope, at least for me, that's a great interest, is working with performance, and uh, I don't know, I hope that that was part of the logic, at least. I, ha I have seen that photo. I think it's just kind of ambient. Like if you go to the dry cleaner or the gas station, it's like there next to the pinup calendar or something. Like I I've seen it, but I hadn't really thought that much about it until I realized that you could make a screenplay out of it. <laughs> like, and I, I was very impressed by the way that the writers had, had in a way taken that photograph and the letter and then really made so much out of it. I didn't really work on the script. We made some rehearsal changes uh, as we kind of got deeper into the characters and the story. Um, and I, I worked with all of the actors, but I, uh, just to focus a little bit on the Elvis and the Nixon characters, um, with uh, Mike, we actually, both of us, worked together with um, Jerry Schilling, the real historical Jerry Schilling. His book was a big guide for me. Um, you know, there's so much material about both Elvis and Nixon, and I just let that book be kind of my North Star. Um, I'm not gonna say I didn't ever watch any Elvis movie, you know, like, like I did try to learn some other things, but I just always tried to come back to Jerry's book. And what was great is we could come back to actual Jerry. And so uh, he, was a great help to Mike. Um, he took Mike to Memphis. He took him to Graceland after hours. He took him to um, the Lauderdale Courts apartments where Elvis was a kid. And, and I think, I actually think that made one of the biggest impressions of anything on, on Mike was to see this person who became so glamorous, charismatic, rich, and powerful and famous. Um, to see the humble nature of what it looked like out his bedroom window, I think, it's, it's part of my impression that that has um, had a big impact on him. With both Michael and Kevin, we tried to look at things that uh, could help inform us about just kind of traditional actor work, about the kind of physical work, and I know they both really thought a lot about the voice. And, um, but like different from doing an imitation, they also are both so skilled at preparing a character and thinking about you know, where is that person in their arc of this story? Where does that fit into the longer story of their lives? Um, you know, so that for Mike, I think he focused a lot on how tired Elvis would be after he did all those shows in Vegas. And, you know, what kinds of conversations he might have been in with his family and the people at Graceland that would impel him to go on a journey and things like that. With Kevin, I think he, he really... Um, he did the same thing where he looked at, you know, films and listened to voice recordings uh, to try to think about what you can learn about a person that way. And then he also thought about like, okay, well, where where is Nixon in his presidency? You know, when does the, all the taping start? When is China? Like, what is in the works now that Nixon might be keeping a secret? You know, and, and try to really place himself in a kind of broader story for Nixon. And... Um, and then together we all tried to think about like how do we bring these very separate spheres together? What does that feel like and what kind of tone emerges from that possibly absurd juxtaposition? For me as a director, as opposed to, you know, for the characters, I really benefited a lot from thinking about how other artists and writers have worked on these figures, you know, so like I actually was very helped by the Warhol, um, who, you know, represented both Elvis and Nixon. Differently, I might add, like the Nixon is like green. <laughs> you know? um, or uh, like Alice Walker wrote this amazing story in 1955 that has a kind of imaginary Elvis-like figure in it that I think is really wonderful. Um, there's, um, I really like that Gillian Welsh song, Elvis Presley Blues, you know, and just there's, there's so many ways that people have already thought about Elvis that I could benefit from. And also about Nixon, you know, like, like there's, like I, it, 
I think that in this story, the Nixon of this story is actually quite different from the kind of super paranoid Nixon of the Oliver Stone, for example. And, and it was just exciting for me to think about what's different about, like, what do we need out of Nixon in this story as opposed to the other national stories that we know about him? He's like a great singer, and actually, I think he's a very good actor. I think he's underrated as an actor because people just sort of treat him as if he's only his persona. But he's actually a very good actor. And, um, and I guess through this project, I've also just gotten to know a little bit, a little bit more about him biographically. And I also just kind of admire him as a person who's so curious and kind of spiritually and culturally looking around at uh, things like um, I don't kind of new age things or spiritual elements that he thinks might be helpful or interesting and like a person who really is willing to change a little bit. Um, the story that this movie tells is also about changes that he's resisting. And that I think that's true too, but but it, it is interesting to me how he, he's always like, well, let's learn about karate, do you know? And, and like really moving into new territories too. I think that there's a, actually a lot of it, attention to this kind of 1970 period right now. And for, for me, it's it's always been of great interest because in a way, exactly because of the countercultural changes that both Nixon and Elvis are afraid of, you know, and to me, I've always looked to that moment as a time when people really did believe that change was possible. Um, and the, the exact countercultures that these men are nervous about, I think, are also extremely interesting. Like, I think the SDS was very interesting. I think the Black Panthers, very interesting. And the ways that people right now are referencing them is, I think, really important. And to me, points to the idea that, that in the present, people are also looking for a sense of possibility and a sense of change.